I invite the guests, our guest speaker, our political party leaders, members of the media, and our distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Today's eventful summit. I wish also to thank the organizers for giving me the unique opportunity to chair the event. Can Chairman is auspicious. We give him the many challenges confronting our dear country, Nigeria. Ask Nigerians to zero into the 2019 general elections to elect our political leaders. and representatives before the next dispensation, the preservation of Nigeria's unity in diversity, our cultures, our different linguistics and religious faiths and sects, and its sovereignty is to my mind paramount. People might be far in their understanding, conditions, and methodologies of achieving this for the corporate existence of Nigeria as a nation and its survival is work in progress. While some countries have been able to admirably harness their diversities to immense advantages, ours to dream of make the results. As a nation, we have operated in fits and stops. Like a candle in the wind, our ways are uncertain, and such that our collective destiny as a people plotted. This unhealthy state of affairs invariably make the gathering of this nation inevitable. More so in this era of politicking, when hard questions must be asked and answered by the political elite, especially as it concerns the recurring debate of restructuring Nigeria for the common good. It is heartwarming to see that the cream of Nigerian society, particularly Meadows in politics, is here to tackle this all important question. I leave the discussion on the theme Nigeria Beyond Oil, convinced that our preeminent Nobel laureate, the one and only Professor Walesho Inka, will fully engage us on this subject. I must, however, commend the organizers of this initiative of constructively interrogating the political elite on their plan, their programs and policies for the country pre and post election. More compelling, to my mind, is the need to obtain their commitment to restructuring Nigeria back to a true federation in which the federated unit are autonomous, contributing to human capital development and paying their taxes to the federal government. In fact, in fact none is without human and mineral resources, nor is any benefit of land. But therefore, there isn't any state without the basic requirements for economic and human capital development. Some states may have more of such resources than others, just as it is in the international community. However, the successful nations have used their abilities through right political and economic policies to make themselves wealthy and powerful. They now have become reference points to others who fail to harness their resources and develop them for the common good of their people. To, show to a proper federal constitution, 
that allows the federated units to use their resources on a basis. It would be amazing to see the boom in human capital development, economic and scientific transformations that Nigeria would witness in the shortest possible time. What is lacking therefore and holding us back is the freedom to develop those basic requirements to acquire phenomenal growth and development. <coughs> Just as Nigeria goes to the World Bank, the IMF and now China, to secure loans for its projects, loans which must be repaid, so also can the Federation Union approach the federal government and other richer Federation units to invest in their developmental projects knowing that they will repay the loans. The example of Lagos State and Cook and Kirti State joint rice venture attests to this point being made. The fear, therefore, that some Nigerian states will be disadvantaged under this arrangement will be removed because the federal government can intervene directly but through loans or money to the federal units to realize their developmental projects. States are therefore not likely to misapply the intervention funds or loans because their people will rise against them for attempting to misapply their commonwealth and so on will be curtailed to a fairness minimum and could be a fame of the past. May I allude that the Nigeria that I'm describing will not only be one of a handshake with one another, but that of a huge embrace with one another, which will kill, quell the fear of domination and breed healthy competition, respectability, tolerance, love, and remove the trust deficit amongst our leaders and our people. I will even, it will even enhance the adherence to the rule of law and curtail corruption to a larger extent. As we prepare for the general election, it is pertinent to remind members of the Independent National Electric Commission, INEC, that theirs is a sacred trust. But though appointed by the government, they are responsible to the people of Nigeria. To make INEC truly independent, there is the need to review the system of appointing its members. In the UK, for instance, the Speaker's Committee appoints electoral officers withdrawn from political parties. Presently, of the total 10 members appointed by, uh, by this committee and ex official, there are four conservative, but three Labour and one Scottish nationalist, uh, excluding the Speaker. The body reports to the Parliament and not to the Prime Minister, thereby making them truly independent and representative. I repeat, the body reports to the Parliament, not to the Prime Minister, thereby making them truly independent. The Chairman isn't appointed by the Prime Minister either, but by the Speaker's Committee, thereby insulating him or her but from any direct influence by the Prime Minister on the United States, the President, or whoever that decides for him. Nigeria should emulate this and do so. Before the forthcoming election, therefore, our next must aim at bettering the enviable conduct of the 2015 general election under Professor Atahi Mujeka. At this point, may I urge our presidential, gubernatorial, nas national, and state assembly candidates to embrace peacefully the verdict of Nigerians at the polls, because Nigeria is bigger than our political, ethnic, cultural, religious, or sectarian differences. But finally, we expect the signing of the Article of Faith 
on restructuring Nigeria by political parties. The primary purpose of this is to ensure a common agreed principles the tools of promotion of peace, unity, progress, and to promote the intensification of resource generation but from non-oil sector, whereupon federated units of Nigeria we shall be free to generate and utilize the resources for the common good. Well, thank you. All right, please, can we do it better, please? Uh, can we do it better?